do believe Queen B and Dr. E. We've got audacity to believe, to believe, yeah. We've got audacity to believe. To Hi, believe. I'm Queen B. And I'm Dr. E. Queen D, we have something really wonderful to talk about today. Now, I was thinking about the shoe industry. And uh, we oftentimes, as, as, as regular consumers, we buy shoes, we wear shoes, we love our shoes, et cetera. But there's someone that created a machine to make it easy for manufacturers to process the shoes, to make the shoes. And that is the person that invented a product called the lasting machine. Let's talk a little bit about that. Who is that person? Absolutely. Well, his name was Jan Motzeliger, and he was born in what was Dutch Guinea. And he was of African-American descent and Dutch descent. But he was an amazing inventor. Now, the lasting machine that he created, he created and received a patent for it in the 1800s, believe it or not. In 1883, he received a patent for the lasting machine. Now, how the lasting machine was different than what had previously been the custom in creating shoes is that it made a template. And it, that template allowed for the shoe making system, which had been a hand driven uh, system to be automated. And so he has changed the trajectory for shoemaking for every shoe designer, every shoe wearer, every shoe company ever since his invention owes it to Jan Motzeliger for the lasting machine. Now, so that lasting machine is very interesting. You, uh, you mentioned that first shoes were hand uh, uh, made or hand sewn and developed, et cetera, but the lasting machine is my understanding that it was uh, that machine was able to crank out literally hundreds of shoes within a, a very short time, as opposed to sitting down, handcrafting, hand making the shoe that will take sometimes days to actually process. Can we talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Uh, it says that Matzo Ligers. The lasting machine was such a huge success. And this is the because of all the reasons that you stated. It automated the industry. It made it possible to have a standard of excellence for shoemaking that wasn't there before, as well as more proficiency in the shoemaking process, developing hundreds of shoes uh, from one template. But what is so interesting is that history of this phenomenal inventor, Dr. E has been hidden all of these years. Now he, of course, back then as now, um, faced systemic racism and he was uh, ridiculed and everything else because developing this machine was a process. So he had other uh, machines that he developed that didn't work so well. And much like the Wright brothers, he was audacious enough to continue on until he created the perfect machine, which was a lasting machine. But the sad part of his life is that he died in his early 30s of tuberculosis. So even though he had the patent, he never was able to really reap all the fruit of his invention. And another company bought the patent at the, of course, at his death. But what an incredible, amazing young man that invented the template for what we know for all time of how to make uh, excellence in design of shoe wear. Well, you know what I find interesting? You mentioned systemic racism. And uh, when I read about this uh, wonderful inventor, uh, it just sat in my heart that not only uh, did he work so hard to do something uh, wonderful for the world and, invent and while inventing the lasting machine, he had to deal with the taxation of racism and the burden 
of racism to get through all of those obstacles and hurdles. And, and it's no different right now. Uh, Kobe. Right. Right. It's like if we come up with something exciting, mm -hmm. innovative, creative, there's something inside of us. There's something that had to be inside of him to keep him going so that he could actually get that patent. And yes, it is, uh, it is uh, it's sad that he died so young um, and wasn't able to reap the benefits, but we're reaping the benefits of his labor from way back then. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the cultural taxation that sometimes may block us from moving forward. And maybe the, the audacious, uh, just say, uh, zeal that he had within himself to keep going no matter what the obstacles were. Talk a little bit about that, Queen V. You know, absolutely. There was such an audacious desire to achieve. For one thing, we have to think about it in the context of his times. Not only was he uh, born, of course, uh, African-American descent and everything, there was so much racism, but when he came to Philadelphia, when he came to America in the 1800s, he couldn't speak English. So, you know, according to the uh, uh, thoughts of the time, he was wrong color, wrong uh, nationality, couldn't speak the common language. So he had to learn how to be audacious on so many levels. But what I love about his story, and you refer to that, is that everything that he did went to serve others. And then we can go into how it has impacted Black shoe designers and shoe designers of every ethnicity, color, creed today. Mm -hmm. How has he impacted them, Dr. E? Well, you know what I find interesting? There are uh, shoe designers right now that think in terms of, or, or that experienced, uh, they may not have uh, found the shoe that they like or whatever it is, but looking back at, in history, they think to themselves, well, you know what? I can't find the design that I particularly care for. I can do this myself. I can design my own shoe. Now there's four black women that I like for us to, to talk about that, that were audacious enough to believe that, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about the racism. I'm not gonna worry about someone telling me that I cannot do this. What I want to do is concern myself with what I can do. And that's something that, our, that, that everybody listening need to think about. Don't think about what you can't do or don't think about what society says you cannot do. Think about what you can do. And I think about these black women who were audacious enough to believe, you know what, I'm, a, well, I'm going in this store, I'm gonna look for a certain brand, a certain model, a certain size, a certain style. If I can't find it, I'm gonna make it myself. Let's talk about these ladies. Absolutely. Well, one of them that comes to mind of the four that we were referencing is Tiana Barnes. And I love her quote that says, my hope is when other women wear my designs, each may recall the moment in their own life that define her path. Isn't that incredible? I love it. I believe that the best designers are those that get out of themselves, get the imagination, the creativity, the origination that God gave them, and they use it to serve others. You know, I don't have that gifting of shoe design, of looking at how I would want a particular shoe, but wow, uh, Dr. E, I sure know it when I see it, right? Yeah. We know it when someone else has designed it. We're like, that's it. That's yeah. it. That's just what I wanted. And that is the gift that we give to each other. That is a gift that we give the world when we don't think small when we are audacious enough to dream and then to pursue. Well, you know, it's really interesting that you mentioned uh, that, that I, I, it reminds me of when my daughter was just, uh, just this young kid. And um, I remember her saying that she, when, she grew, when she grows up, I like to see people wearing my label because she was not into labels. It's like um, kids learn at a very young age uh, to, 
to engage in maybe uh, what other people like. And so they pull in to themselves the external world and what the external world values. But me listening to this kid, my child saying, you know what, I wanna wear my own label. She's never been into designer clothes or anything. And that started as a young kid. Now, there's, um, I'm not knocking a designer labels or anything else, but the key is that when you think that you can do your own thing or you're not um, in a position uh, mentally where you feel like you gotta wear someone else's clothing or someone else's brand to make you feel better, I think that that is amazing. When you don't have to have that, that tag, if you will, that's, that you're wearing some other designer's clothing, shoes, or whatever it is. Now, the other Black female designers, let's talk about their story. Oh my goodness, we have so many incredible ones. This one, her name is Amina Abdul Jalil. And her whole concept is to try something different. I love how audacious she is to try something different. And for those of us, and we will have the links in, of course, of their stories, for those that view her shoes, they are absolutely gorgeous and different because she was a dancer turned shoe designer that believes in creating fantasies for our feet. Don't you love that? Yeah. Well, you, know, I love interesting. you know what's interesting when you say she's a dancer turned shoe designer? Mm -hmm. When I think of a dancer, I think of a person that's free, let their bodies move and yeah. groove and do whatever. And to translate that, Mm -hmm. into uh, shoes and saying, I'm going to have that same move, the movement in the, in the shoes and the design and, and let, let my dancing acumen uh, be developed in my mind so that I can put it to some, something else like a shoe so that other people can feel what I feel and experience. I mean, I think that's powerful. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And she is Alaskan born of African American descent. So see, we get all these flavors from all the diversity and all the culture from all of these, uh, you know, places near and far. It is just, you know, I love it. I, to me, it feels like the gumbo of life. You know, yes. I love gumbo because it has so many textures right. and flavors and colors. Well, it is exactly the same when we allow God to use our gifts right. fully, and we are audacious enough to believe that you we can know, do it. I hear you. You know what, what I find so incredible, uh, Queen V, is that when we, uh, when we can unlock the whatever, uh, unlock the uh, whatever's in our mind to think that, okay, I have a profession. This is what I'm supposed to do. I can't do anything outside of this profession, so I'm kind of stuck. So Absolutely. we can unlock that mental, uh, I can't even, I don't even know what to call it, but I think we sometimes can get trapped into doing what we've always done and we're afraid to step out and do something different. But if we can do what we've always done and then transform that into something else, just like we have our podcast, um, at the end of the day, you can literally imagine where you can go in, a, in so many different levels. And I just love the fact that a dancer turned shoe designer. I mean, yeah. how, how powerful is that? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Isn't that, that's just amazing to me. Yeah. And our next designer is Jessica Perdomo. And she is of African-American and Latino background. Okay. And, or I should say Latinx background. Okay. And she is from Brooklyn. And she has a whole concept of our shoes define us. And she says, maybe too much so. Okay. So she is all into designing shoes that are perfect for the individual. Okay. And along with that, I love that you said that sometimes we allow ourselves to be stuck. Right. And uh, in reference to your daughter saying she was not going to allow uh, a designer to define her, right. we cannot allow the designer brands to um, define us and our value. You know, we really add value to what we wear. What we right. wear doesn't add value to us. 
Right. And that's a whole different mind shift of we are the valuable component. Right. We, you know, the car that we drive is valuable because we're in it. Right. Not because of what it is. Right. That's it. Yeah. Well, yes. you know, it's, it's really interesting when I think about designers and, um, you know, I teach marketing and I used to sometimes talk to my students and try to make a joke about designers and how sometimes uh, consumers get so trapped into believing that if I wear this particular brand, then I will have made it, whatever it is. And then I think about, uh, you know, I used to tell my students, I, I ran into this one person that says, okay, look, look at my, look inside of the collar. I want you to see the brand I'm wearing. It's like, okay, you got to look in the collar to see what brand you're wearing so that you could feel better about letting people know that you can afford to buy a particular brand. Um, I, I find branding very, very interesting, but I, I find even more so was interesting how consumers get caught up into wearing someone else's label or brand. And if they can show other people what they're wearing or what they have, then they feel better about themselves. And that's a whole new different uh, podcast that maybe we can talk about, but I just find it very uh, refreshing when there, there are people out there that look like me, that run into the, the nose or the, the systemic racism, because I'll tell you, it's the cultural taxation that many of us experience on a day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day basis just because of the color of our skin. Absolutely. And we can get over uh, that and we can climb through it or we can blast through the, the, the negativity to find ourselves or what we really, really love and enjoy, then that's a real true freedom. And we talked about uh, uh, in one of our past, uh, past podcasts about not being enslaved, and that's a mental process. Once you've broken free of being enslaved mentally, then you, the sky's the, the sky is the limit. The world is, well, actually there's no limits because the sky, when I say the sky's the limit, that's putting a cap on things, right? Yeah. It's no limit at all how far you can go. If you keep your mind open and not allowing the external environment to trap you. Now there's one other designer that we need yeah. to talk about. There is one last designer of the four that we are highlighting. Of course, there are hundreds of others, right. I'm sure. But her name is Stella Mays, and she has an amazing array of shoes. She grew up the daughter of a fisherman in British Virgin Islands. So again, we're adding a whole nother flavor. She's African-American descent, but she was raised around all the beauty of the Caribbean all of the texture, all of the colors, and she has used pieces of her childhood mm. in, her in her shoe designs. Yes. And that is the beauty to me of originality, that we all have a very, very perfect DNA from the master, right? And that we are all individual masterpieces. So nobody can really ever compete with us. Right. When we operate in our own originality, our own God-given creativity, and, you know, like you said, what we love, what we're passionate about, right. what we can be audacious enough to fight. Through. Right, right. Well, you know, uh, Queen V, that brings on a, a whole new different topic. Uh, how do you get there when you when you say that okay our God given talents and and we know what we really you know love and like or whatever and uh, uh, how do we get to the point that we can embrace who we are embrace what we love and then move on and then make a career out of it or to make a a, a job or whatever it is that we dream of how do we break free of the, I can't, can't do this because they won't let me, or looking for someone else to give you permission to right. dream and to explore. How do we get to the point that we can just literally let it all go and do our thing? I think one of the great ways to do it is to go to, I call it the university of you. Okay. Start studying yourself. Start, so many people have no idea what their gifts are, they know they're 
their best friend's favorite color. They know their husband's favorite meal. They know their children's favorite, whatever, but they don't know themselves. And we are all evolving and changing constantly, especially in this post pandemic era. We are on a surge of change. And so I believe in the university of two, uh, excuse me, of you, that we have to take time, dedicated time to think, thinking time. What do I like? What am I passionate about? What do I want to do? What do I no longer want to do? What habits are serving me and what habits are hindering me? We have to get alone, in my opinion, with ourselves, preferably with our God, and download our dreams and desires. It starts with creating a vision. Once we can see it, we can be it, we can do it, we can have it. Okay, but uh, Queen V, that brings on another question. Okay, um, suppose we, we have that vision and we can see it and we, we really wanna get there. What about the person that's trapped that feel like, okay, I really want to do this, but I don't have the external support I don't have the family support. I don't have whatever it takes, just you know that drive. It's like, they know what they want, but there's something within them that's lacking to be, you know, or maybe that fear, the fear mm -hmm. of failure or the fear sure. that, well, what if this doesn't work or may not have the resources or the money. How do you, how do you get past that sticky point that keeps you, you know, uh, from uh, moving forward? Absolutely. I believe beyond the University of You, mm -hmm. I stand by Habakkuk 2 and 2 in the Bible that says, write the vision. Okay. Write the vision and make it plain so that he that reads it can run with it. Writing down the vision is so critical because once you write it, you start believing it. You can start seeing it. And all writing takes is paper and pencil. Anybody can reduce themselves to a, you know, 99 cent store, you know, sheet of paper and a pencil or a pen. That's all it takes. You know, businesses, multi-million dollar, billion dollar businesses have been designed on the back of napkins. Mm -hmm. I believe that Starbucks original plans were designed on the back of a napkin. Mm -hmm. Virgin Airlines, those original ideas on the back of a napkin, on a plane. We are not limited. We are only limited by the concepts that we hold. And if we really believe that we can do something and achieve something, the first thing besides the vision is the writing it out. Okay. Writing okay. it out is so critical. So that's like a vision board. A lot of people say, yeah. okay, I got a vision board. Now, let mm -hmm. me say this. Um, I really believe in my heart that whatever drives you, whatever gets you up in the morning, whatever your inspiration is, it's, it's, it's like whatever makes you extremely happy, that is an indicator of something that you really cannot ignore. Because if, you, if something drives you and you get all excited and you just start exploring that, et cetera, then that is a, an avenue that one needs to explore, that, that internal, uh, I, I don't even know what to call it, but the motivation, what wakes you up in the morning, what gets your juices flowing. At least if we could write it down, like you said, do that vision board, if we believe in ourselves, then that's when we can go look for the resources, hunt for the resources, because nobody is going to come knocking on your door if they don't know you exist. I also believe that you gotta, as we talked about before in earlier podcasts, you got to surround yourself with the right people. Yes. If you absolutely. surround yourself with the right people and tell people, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm about. There's some good people in this world. I have met some wonderful, wonderful people from all races, all backgrounds, all creeds and religions, wonderful people that can help move your vision forward. Let me say this, uh, Queen V. I always wanted to write a book about my life, always. And I never, it's like, okay, I wanna write about this. So I started documenting for years. I journaling as, as you talk about in the uh, 
Queens uh, 5 a.m. club, you say journal, 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 write it down, write it down, even in your own book where you say journal. It doesn't, it, have, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be anything that is, you know, uh, logical or whatever, but just get it on paper. I read that book and I know it, your book. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to show it right here. Reclaim Jeans, right here, Reclaim. I keep it, this is my bedside book. And I know that it's a little bit of uh, kind of off topic a little bit, but your words were written right here. You said, write it down. And when you write it down, you can have, you can be that shoe designer. You can be that, uh, that, uh, that brand person that everybody wants to wear your brand. You don't have to worry about anyone else's brand. You can be free enough to do whatever you set your mind to but you gotta have the drive. If you have the drive, Queen V, if you have the drive, nothing can stop you. When I decided, and I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, to make my point, when I decided to write my book after I had gathered things for years and years and years and had written for years and years and years, I told my friends, I wanna write a book. I'm looking for an editor. The next thing you know, voila, I had an editor. Hey, I'm writing a book. I need someone to, uh, to just talk about the book. All my friends, including you, came forward, started reading what I was writing, and then that motivated me more to get deeper into it. I, I share all this, uh, Queen V, to let our listeners know that you can do anything. It doesn't matter what it is. If you believe it, if you can see it, you can have it, but you got to do the work. You have to labor under correct knowledge. you got to do it. Nobody's going to give it to you. So, Vanita, I know that I said a whole lot. How, do, how can you pack that or unpack it so that it makes sense in, in terms of the topic? Oh, I think that it all, it all you know, goes back to our audacious to believe. If, you know, amazing things happen when we are audacious to believe. And I think that generally we think so little of what God has given us. But if we are audacious enough to believe and we give him our little, then he makes much of it. And on that, I believe that that wraps up our session today on being audacious enough to believe that they could design a machine that would impact millions forever. Right. And that was in the 18th century. That, that was in I mean, the 18th century. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And so when people talk about that they can't do certain things because society says you can't, well, if somebody is uh, can do like our uh, topic person uh, to, uh, today can do, and that's to create that lasting machine so that millions and millions of shoes can be cranked out easily and put out there in the marketplace, if he can do it back in those times, against all of those odds. Yes. What does that say for us? We have an opportunity to do anything that we set our mind to. And we have to tune out the, the negative noise and we have to be laser focused and we can get it done. Absolutely, Queen. Uh, Doc, queen, I call you uh, Queen Dr. E. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a queen too. <laughs> you are all of that. <laughs> yes. But I believe that that wraps up our segment. I think that you covered it in a nutshell, wrapped it up very nicely on the Audacious to Believe broadcast. And they can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, Instagram. I think SoundCloud, we are at QueenB and DrE.com. You can find us and follow us. And we would love to hear your input and your comments. And subscribe too. Subscribe too. You got to do yes, it. Indeed. Okay. So this is QueenB and Dr. E. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see you next time.